Good everyone, this is my Chroma Converter running. I've got six stacks. Um, this the brings in the middle. Little tiny motor at the top. This is the motor controller. It's running at about 48% at the moment. Um, let's take this focus. This is from Jaker. It's pretty good. 12 volt, 10 amp. Uh, sorry, 40 amp motor controller. Um, it's coming. Power's coming from this 12, 24 volt, uh, 10 amp power supply from the wall. So the the motor on top of the Cromer is pulling it just over six amps. Um, so way more than this motor is supposed to be able to do. But, you know, who cares, it's a little motor. Uh, then I've got the cables coming off. That's the bridge at the top. I'm pulling off the DC at the moment. Uh, two of the cables are just put on meter over here. As you can see, it's just over 12, nearly 13 volts. That's because it's connected. Focus to this battery straight from the DC off the bridge in the Cromery. It's got it up to 12.2 in about 5 minutes. It was at 11.8. Oh sorry, no, 11.95. Um, and what's interesting about that is the Cromery, without a load, I'll just show you on the meter. Let's zoom in a bit. If I take the load off the battery, I'll just do now. It slows down, it goes up to about 40 volts, it'll stabilize about 40 volts, which is how I've sort of set it. If I go back in, there's a the battery voltage. Also, I'll show you the draw on the motor, the drive motor. It's hard to do with my hand, so bear with me. It goes up to about 7 amps. Starts to die on me. Plug it back in. It'll creep back down to just over six. So that's all pretty pretty kosher as far as what Bedini says. Now, the only problem I have with this at the moment is my slip rings aren't quite balanced, so you get that bit of vibration. If they were in balance, it's a lot quieter. If I just move the um, these up for a minute, you see how much quieter it is. So we're back charging this battery. Now the meter's going all screwy. I bump my connection. 12 point. Yeah, there we go. So that will slowly creep up. Um, this battery is 600 CCA starter battery off um, I don't know, some bit of farm equipment at my rally's place. I just took it. They weren't using it. Um, Sentry battery. 12 volt, you know, wet cell. And it's in very good nick. It's um, only once or twice been charged with a, my Bedini charger, a solid state one. So it hasn't really been conditioned at all. So this is a good little test. If this Cromery, so 12 volts at, for argument's sake, 6 amps, uh, what's that, 12 6, is that 70 something watts input power into this? And depending on how long it takes to charge this battery, it would be a good indicator of how much usable output the motor has, in my opinion. Because I've tried measuring, and when I put the amp meter, or any amp meter I've got 
on a direct short for the output of the chrome ray, uh, it registers half an amp, not even that sometimes. Um, so it's very interesting to see. So that's slowly getting up there. I'm going to leave this for several hours. See what goes on. Um, so this is the machine. I'll just stop it and I'll show you the problem I had with the small motor. Alright. So they're my coils. Aluminium shaft. Get right in there for you. Tell you what's a pain in the ass is that soldering onto brass. <laughs> Not as much fun as it sounds. So there's my magnet stacks. You know, labeled them so I don't get confused, which happens easily. <laughs> so I made it acrylic so you can see right down into it, and um, plus aluminium, as everyone knows, has unusual reactions, interactions with magnetic fields especially when moving through magnetic fields or fields are moving through I mean they use them for the braking elements on roller coasters and shit so I figure the least amount of aluminium we have in there the better but um well mainly for the top and end plates anyway i focus on missing so what I'll do is I'll just start my little converter the motor here now, I have to um, position the pole piece properly because this motor doesn't have enough torque to start on its own. If I don't do it in time, there we go. So it's drawing over 10 amps on the start. And once it gets to speed, Set it so that when it's running under the short, it's at six amps. Ish. Let's right. get this battery going up again. Quickly test something, so we'll see what it's on there. Oh wow, it went above 50 volts. Okay, I've just changed the range to 250. So it goes up to 75 volts, so I'm disconnected now. But the motor tries to stall. Now that I've, because I've got it connected to the battery, it's showing what the battery voltage is, sort of. Anyway, once I get a new motor, a little talky motor, it should be good. And this is causing grief at the moment, so. But anyway, that's where I stand. It, um, it shorts out, I mean, it speeds up under load. Um, light bulbs I haven't been able to light, and it tends to slow down when I connect a light bulb, which is a bit different. But, um, so it's drawing six and a half. Motor controller, it's a good little motor controller. Battery is at 
that 13 volts nearly. I think that's a bit over reading because when I compare it to this one, it's at 12.31. Now the only issue with this meter, this digital one, is that it's been left connected to my solid state Bedini charger for long periods of time, uh, which I don't think's been any good for it. The transients going through it. It's, it's made me not trust it a couple of times. It's done funny things. And I tend to trust an analog meter any day over a digital meter, purely because the analog. And I'm of that mindset that analog still sounds better. <laughs> Alright, that's my chromery, guys. Uh, more to come later. I'll get my crow set up. Uh, hey, it just randomly sped up. That's weird. I'll get my crow set up, get some waveform readings. Uh, and a new drive motor. Alright, cheers.